Dr. Tomac, uh, we welcome you on Jomo Kevin TV, and uh, we're going down memory lane after so many years that you left the canon of Yawande, a difficult team in the country, and uh, the indomitable lions. I grew up in uh, Limbe, or Victoria. Uh, I was about a year old when my mom brought me back from, from England, so... My formative years were in Bota, uh, Victoria, and um, I went over to Yaoundé in about 1972 to um, uh, join my father. 72 until I went to uh, Baptist Boys Secondary School, I was attending uh, Ecole Bileng in, uh, in, in Yaoundé. And so I played a lot of football at uh, Gramesa, where we used to where we used to live. We were those kids who would go there and watch these guys play. Uh, that is something else I could have done, but I wasn't growing fast enough. So over the years, I probably had 15, 20 or 30 other kids that grew up with me who ended up playing uh, uh, volleyball for, for the national team. So it was just playing in uh, grammar South all the time. So when I went to Boya, uh, what a cruel thing for my parents to do to me. I was used to going to school, coming home. And suddenly, you take me and put me in boarding school, which was quite, uh, quite daunting at the time. So yeah, it, it took a lot of adjusting, but I wouldn't play with the big boys because I was getting kicked really, really, really well. But every summer holiday, I'm back to Yaoundé, so we're back playing again with my little Katiu friends and stuff like that. And uh, that's how uh, that continued until um, uh, I left uh, Boya. I left Boya, came back to uh, Collège Bilingue d'Application. Yeah. yeah. One year. I think I deliberately didn't do well in my uh, all levels because I just I couldn't see myself going back to back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in Yaoundé. Yes, that's the way. I mean, I went to um, uh, college Berlin for a year, and I think when I got there, uh, a lot of things just changed for me. Yaoundé back in the days, you had uh, uh, leagues everywhere in the summer. There's Mokolo. There was. Uh, Komkana, there was Kondongo, there was one, Melen, uh, Ecole, the whatever. So it was like uh, I would play with a certain number of guys in Mokolo. They would rush me to a taxi to make sure I get to Chinga on time to play the next game. They would rush me to Komkana to play the next game. They would rush me to uh, Melen so you could play. So it was that kind of stuff. Yeah, you play an hour here or 20, 30 minutes here, you win the game, there's somebody else waiting to take you somewhere. So it was just one of those scenarios that, you know, playing here, playing here, playing here, playing here. And I think during that, uh, you, you got noticed. And there was no structure to my playing right up to that stage. It was just, I want to play. Somebody thinks I can play, they get me there, I'll play was no structure until but, um but when you became when you became prominent in football but we the, the public started seeing you in canon how did you get into canon so after um 
College Belang, I went to Isse Belang, uh, uh, Yaoundé. And the whole football thing with the leagues continued. And uh, it's one day I was playing in, uh, what's this called? In, in St. Melen, just before Mini Firm. There was, uh, there was a school that I can't remember, back of the uni. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, after the game, somebody came to me and said, you shouldn't be playing here. I'm going to take you out of here and I'm going to get you into a proper team. And you would never guess who that person is. You probably met this person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was, uh, Louis de Gonzague. Okay, the very popular referee. Popular referee, yes. And he said to me, I think you can play, but um, you can't be playing in leagues like this. I need to get you into a different setting altogether. So that's, okay. how, that's how I joined... Uh, the Canon Junior Squad. Okay. That's how in the morning before going to school, I had to go to Kondongo and train certain days. We had a coach there, Kome. We you had about 20, 20 guys my age, and that's how we got into um, the Canon um, uh, Junior, which had fantastic structure, fantastic support, and a network of uh, scouts, and you name it. And that's probably, if you look 10 years after I went there, if you look at the bulk of the players around at the time, they had gone through some sort of similar academy, not canon, mm -hmm. yes. So all those guys that I used to meet in Kondongo, um, Melen, um, Mokolo, Konkana, playing for those same different, different leagues, Okay. We found ourselves playing in the coop top for different, different clubs. Because they too had been scouted by uh, somebody else. But that's how I got into the Canon uh, junior ranks. Yes. Now you were in the Canon milieu, I should say, even though it was the junior ranks. Before then, most of us had been used to stories about Canon being a very mythical team. They would talk about Canon and black dogs, Canon and a woman, Canon and so on and so forth. And you were already in this milieu. Did those stories affect you in any way? Uh, that was fake news. It's all fake news. Um, during, my, during my entire time in, in Canon, there was no mystery. There was nothing. It's just a perception. Um, People had these views. Uh, there was nothing on toward uh, going on outside of what people could actually see. Um, I probably reinforces some of the stuff that you you go out to learn. Definitely, that you know what hard work pays. That's what it was. Uh, if you're playing alongside better players, they will make you a better player. And here you were in this in this mythical team. Most of us already had known that Cardon had a sacred ground where they were playing, known as Stade Malien. You got into Stade Malien. How did you feel? Uh, when to Stade Malien, funny enough, we couldn't train with the first team all the time because it would clash. Okay. So most of the time, we would train in the morning before going to, sc to school. Those of us who were going to uh, college and whatever, and then. We might come back in the evening and watch the big boys uh, actually train. Occasionally, occasionally, very rarely, uh, Kome would go to uh, the coach, who at the time was uh, Akono Jampo, and say, I think you should integrate this one or that one or this okay. one okay. with uh, uh, your team. I think you should have a closer look at these kids because I think. They're there or they're about. So we got a few early tasters of what it was to train with uh, Kunde, uh, what it was to train with Unana um, Elundu. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Rujak, uh, Namsi Tobo. Um, right. No, we're training. They weren't doing anything different from what 
I knew, but they were all, some of them were not even a lot more older than me. It's just that they were bigger, bigger guys. They probably started earlier. Yeah, exactly. They had been abroad. They'd been to the junior, the World Cup in Australia in '81. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I'd seen some of these guys play, and um, I mean, I was a regular going to the um, Amado Asia Stadium. I would okay. go religiously to watch games, and suddenly I'm training with these guys. Suddenly I'm passing the ball to that guy, and he's passing it back to me. Suddenly I'm telling that guy, "Hey, you got to close him down." And okay. And it's not turning around and saying, shut up. It's just my <laughs> But uh, Akono was very, very influential in all of that. Because he didn't care what you had achieved in the game. It made no difference to him. Okay. If you turned up, if you didn't train properly, doesn't matter what name you carried, you won't play. And that was very, very encouraging for people like us because we're sitting there going, he's been to the World Cup, he's been here, he's been there. But I tell you what, when we went out jogging or running today, he was last. So there's a good, <laughs> ch- it's a good chance that they're going to drop him. And it did happen. And he, had, he made no excuses about it. Made so, no- so, so how, did you, how, how, were you bro- how were you brought into this, into the first team? Yeah. I kept training, kept training with them. Every now and then they'll call me. Uh, and my best friend then was another guy that I went to um, primary and uh, uh, Ecole Bileng with and College Bileng. Uh, his name is uh, Tabi Victor. Tabi and I were always the fringes. Okay. We got called to the first team a few times, traveled, but never played. So he actually had his debut before me. I can't remember what game, when suddenly they turned around, they had a software, and he was like, huh? What's going to happen here? Yeah, he got changed, got onto the pitch, and he played. And he came back, and I'm like, how was it? It's like, man, it's not any different from training. Right. Yeah, and that's what it was. I mean, my first game, uh, I traveled two, three times with the first team. I wasn't even on the bench. But my first game, the called us, we're playing uh, Union de Douala. At the time, we used to uh, stay at uh, Montfebe because mm-hmm. Canon had a fantastic structure. We would go to Montfebe before the game, spend the night, and uh, when we had a team meeting, as Akono would always do, they turn to the medical staff. Uh, quel est le bilan? Uh, celui-ci, ceci, celui-ci, cela. Il y a combien, combien pour cent? Oh, Panka est uh, peut-être 70 pour cent de ça. That's fine. That's all he needed to know. Oh, so this guy is not 100% fit. So he goes, bon, voilà les 11 ans. Hmm. Guardian Songo, uh, a drought, Rujak, uh, Tamak. I nearly fell off my seat. <laughs> I knew that it meant that uh, Onana wasn't going to play. Tavi too got into that game. So that was the first time the two of us and we were sharing the same room. So you can imagine when we left that meeting and went to our room, we put on our boots. I slept with our boots on during a siesta. <laughs> Six o'clock kickoff in the evening, but just emotions. And I kind of just said, you get in there, that's your job. You mark this person, you mark that person, that's it. Half time, if you're doing this, 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 it means you're doing other people's job and you're not doing your job. So on the football pitch, you do your job first, and then somebody else is after that. If you spend the bulk of your time doing other people's jobs, then you're not doing your own job. Exactly. So it was just a case of enthusiasm. I was marking a guy called uh, 
Dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Smart. He wouldn't stop running all evening. We'll be standing there, the ball is probably 10 miles away, and suddenly, 30 meters sprint. Why is he going? He just <laughs> everywhere for 90 minutes. Even when he went to change his boots, I was stand, just standing there five meters away, waiting for him to change the boots and come back on, and then we'll, we'll continue. And that was my first game on a Thursday night. We didn't, he didn't score, we didn't concede, and that was it. Came out, I couldn't have like, well, and that was it. Never mentioned anything again. 